Today's nugget learning will be about Hindustan Copper, how they managed to triple their profits in this quarter, and how I draw out my reasoning to still hold on to the stock, though I'm not holding to any other metal stock right now. Hi everyone, welcome to the episode of 13th August. Yesterday in the night, I was holding my head not because I have any sympathy for the Heidenberg Group or what they are doing, but for what kind of nation we have become. Entire day, we were spending our month's salary, our hard earnings in defeating a shorter group, not even Indian. And we called it patriotism or nationalism. The entire evening, we were busy trolling the group that we defeated them collectively as a nation. Now, do you think a group like Heidenberg, which is famous or infamous for shorting large stocks, they care for trolling or they were not expecting what the country would do on Monday? Do you think they were not aware of the economic data that is going to get released Monday because of which they probably released their report over the weekend? Even I could guess to a large extent what was coming in those economic numbers. And I've been talking about that in my episodes. So all that was carefully planned and they also know the per size of DIIs. They know that DIIs have nearly spent 30,000 crore already in this month. So everyone in my opinion actually walked into the trap which was meant for today, not for Monday. Everyone who bought yesterday was probably in deep losses today. Now people can say we have bought for long term, we'll hold it for two months, three months. That argument does not hold. Within a span of days, many people were fooled into buying high. And today, a lot of people did not have money to buy. Look at this graph, right from the first stock in terms of percentage gain to the last stock in Nifty. So only these many stocks were up, rest everyone was up very little or down till BPCL on Nifty today. This was the extent of damage in Nifty alone. Now Money Control released a report. They called out the bluff in the inflation number yesterday. They said that the inflation number is low only because of the very very high inflation in the quarter which was used as a reference from last year. Only 60 items were actually down. Significant food items were actually up including veggies and fruits. So no, your inflation did not cool down. No, your bills haven't come down. Your bills have increased only. This news came late, so it may actually add a lot of fuel to the fire which is already burning right now. Hardly anything was up, nearly everything was down. Banking, insurance, metals, they were down most. Look at the cut and the contribution towards the downside from banking compared to everyone else. The deepest cut was in HDFC Bank. HDFC investors are increasingly getting jittery. They are upset with the dividend payout now. Also, the MSCI's increase in weightage was not as high as expected, which means that the foreign flows that will come into HDFC Bank are a lot lower than what the public was expecting. The stock was down 3.5%. No one was spared. ICICI and Axis were probably down the least 0.4% each. SBI 2%, Bajaj Finance 2.2%. The sector was down 2%. LIC is in a bad shape. It is down 20% from its high, 4.3% down today also. They can keep defeating Hindenburg, but their stock price is not winning for sure. The entire pack was actually down 3%. Nifty was actually kind of stable in a range till about 12 o'clock. After that suddenly came the big fall and then Nifty kept falling. This was the point when actually Reliance started cracking. After 2 o'clock again, Nifty was range bound only. This is where the pattern between Nifty and Bank Nifty changed. That is where Reliance cracked. First Cry had an amazing debut up nearly 50% on day one. Now merchant banks typically don't leave so much scope for retail investors these days. This was enormous amount of retail euphoria. Everyone thought that this is a new story. So let's buy it. Now I've seen this kind of story in many, many new age stocks. In about two quarters, the entire profit which has been shown just ahead of this IPO will evaporate this stock will probably be around 350 400 at that stage today the greed slightly increased though markets were falling it seems that people were a bit out of cash and they prefer to buy options and a lot of call options got bought today now tomorrow if the markets fall more then this will get very ugly because tomorrow is a weekly bank nifty expiry thursday is a holiday so nifty expiry will also happen tomorrow two big expiries in a single day Nifty was down 0.85% today, Bank Nifty 1.5%, Nifty IT did not go anywhere, FII is sold, DIs are running out of money or maybe they saved some gunpowder for tomorrow. Nifty Energy down a percent, Nifty Next 50 down a percent, Defense down 1.5%. Literally no greens, the biggest reds were HDFC and SBI. At the time of shooting, the ADRs are not looking good for HDFC, 3% down, Bitcoin down a percent. 
Brent has opened low. US markets, Nvidia was up, but rest of the stocks did not go anywhere. Tesla was down a bit. This is the fall in Reliance, which I was talking about. Reliance was okay till that point. In fact, this was the highest point of the day. TCS these days opens high and then keeps falling. HDFC Bank touched the lowest point of the day, went up and then fell. SBI cracked at this point. ATL was going down whole day. ICICI Bank was going down whole day. Banks mostly had the similar graph down at this point. Most of the banks fell. CSBI, PNB. The bank index kept going down. Defense, everyone fell. Cochin Shipyard, Mazgaon Dock, Solar Industries, GRSE. Except Cochin Shipyard volumes were low. Each and every stock is away 20 to 50 percent nearly from their 52 week high now. Vedanta said they'll divest some of the stake in Hindustan Zinc by an open offer. Both stocks were down. Vedanta is increasingly getting desperate for money. They are literally using Hindustan Zinc like a sugarcane getting every ounce of the money earned out of Hindustan Zinc as dividend and taking it out of the country. Now they are selling Hindustan Zinc, a part of the stake. Now dividend may be looking good. However, this is not good news at all for the stocks, both of them. And these are very important stocks because they are involved not just in Zinc, but also copper and silver. Most stocks were down whole day. No respite. Hindustan copper after the results went up significantly, but the steel stocks literally cracked today. The sector was down 2.2%. Railway stocks on bad day will not go up at all. Software only Zomato corrected 2.4%. And this stock has braved nearly everything in the last one month to go up continuously. The power pack was in a bad shape though Adani Green recovered today 1.5%. But the damage was in the bigger stocks, NTPC, Power Grid, Tata Power continues to bleed 2.4% down. It is only 15% down from its 52 week high. Oil India has been included in MSCI index. That is why it has been going up continuously, up 3% today also. But this news was well known. People who are buying now because of MSCI inclusion will probably lose money because crude also has started inching up now. It is suddenly around 81, 82. So stocks which are being bought because of low crude prices, they now might reverse. Volumes low except for Oil India. Consumption stocks, ITC was down, but Nestle, Britannia, Tata Consumer, Mariko, Patanjali, all of them were up a bit. Adani Wilmer was down 2.5%. Overall, the consumption back, both sibling sectors were down only. Only five sectors were up. Titan actually contributed most to the Nifty stocks today. Auto, everything down. One beverage was up today 1%. Unless the market cracks, I think one beverages will now go up. Whoever wanted to exit has already gone out. All the large chemical stocks were down. Coal India corrected. Both biggies, LNT and RVNL were down. Construction engineering down 1%. Cement each and every stock was down. Home building sector is down a lot. Look where Astral is right now. And the results were not bad. Insurance is looking bad. I think there is a lot of scope to fall more here. The insurance policy prices have gone through the roof. I was looking at my policy today. They have nearly doubled in price in last 2-3 years. This will lead to low volumes only. It cannot increase the volumes in this sector. India is totally unpenetrated or very low in terms of insurance policies. But high prices like these is not affordable for normal public. Investment banking down. Siemens up. ABB down. Real estate corrected though macro tech was up. Today Suzlon was not at upper circuit but Inox Wind Energy was. Deep cuts in telecom. Titan up 2%. Kalyan Jewelers up 1%. Adani Ports and all transport infrastructure stocks were down. Nifty 50, 36 stocks down, 14 up. HDFC, SBI, Bajaj Finance, Tata Motors, ONGC, Adani Enterprises, ITC. Everyone was dragging the index down severely today. Next 50, 40 stocks down, 10 up. Zydas was down most, followed by LIC, Madarsan Sumi, IOC, Shriram Finance, Canara Bank. Now, I am a compulsive trader, but I did not trade yesterday. I did not trade today. I could kind of guess and see what is happening with the Hindenburg fiasco and I don't really want to do guesswork and risk my capital. With two days remaining in this week, I'll probably give this week a miss and see what happens on 19th. Now I might get into selling some of the stocks if they are up tomorrow, but I am not very optimistic about tomorrow either ahead of the holiday on Thursday and two expiries on Wednesday. But for sure, it will be a big, big volatile day. Hindustan Copper, the stock just shot up after the results were announced towards the later part of the day. The PE seems like it has gone down, but it is still very high 80. This is too high for a commodity stock. This was a lot more reasonable at this juncture.
when the stock was probably around 80, 90 or 100 levels. But that is where the euphoria for EV started that Hindustan Copper is a copper company. We never realized that India imports nearly $5 billion worth of copper every year. As a result, domestic prices in India for copper are determined by international prices. Now on year on year basis, the June number for last year was 371 crore sales. That increased to 494 crore. But what happened was expenses did not increase that much. That's obvious because mining cost will more or less remain same. It will depend upon maybe the cost of coal or natural gas or something, some labor cost. So not too much can change in one year if the volumes are not very high. The primary sales number depends upon volumes. That's one. And second is price. So volume into price will decide the sales number which was high this time into EPS increasing from 50 paisa to 1 rupee 17 paisa. Now if you see quarter on quarter this is a reduction only. Now let me show you the reason for both of these. This is the international price of copper. Last year around the May part copper was falling. So this is the lowest point for copper in the recent time. As a result imports were cheaper and Hindustan copper did not make too much money. Then suddenly copper prices went up significantly. Last quarter was the high zone for copper prices internationally. The copper we were importing was costly. As a result, Hindustan copper also could manage to sell its copper stock at high prices. Now the copper prices have gone down. That is why you see a dip compared to previous quarter. Now my general expectation is copper is going to find a support in this zone. But this part I could clearly see coming. And that is why I was still long on Hinsan copper. Now you can guess that if this price does not go up, then what will happen in this quarter result and next quarter results. This mechanism can be used to predict outcome for many, many commodity stocks where there are significant imports from outside. Hope this knowledge was useful. If you decide to test this philosophy, then test it with low money only till you perfect it. Thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow.